Hey everyone, it's Robin R. Island Crafts and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make frying pan handle covers. You may wonder, what's a frying pan handle cover and why do I need it? It's a pot holder for the handle of your frying pan. Maybe you have a cast iron skillet. If you're using this on a stove top, that handle is going to get pretty hot. Or if you put it in the oven, when you go to take it out of the oven, then you can use it. These are meant to be used outside of the oven. They don't go in the oven. They don't go in the microwave. They're just a little cover for the handle on your pan. Because I don't know about you, but many of my pans, if I am boiling water or cooking something on the stove top, the handle, even though this is plastic, still gets really hot. Stay tuned to the end, and I'm going to give you a couple of ideas on how to package these up for gifts in the upcoming holiday season. We have a very simple supply list for this project. I have a piece of Insulbrite batting, a piece of cotton lining fabric, and a piece of cotton outer fabric. If you just want to make one or two of these for your own home and you don't have any Insulbrite at your house and you don't want to purchase any, you can always use a thin towel or a thin washcloth, or you can use a couple pieces of regular batting. The Insulbrite is just meant for pod holders and hot pads and stuff. It helps protect your hand a little extra, but it can be replaced with something else. Now I've cut mine five inches wide and seven inches long, but that can be adjusted depending on what pots you're making it for or what frying pans. As you can see on this little cast iron one, I have a shorter handle. This is one of the ones that came at Walmart for a Christmas gift with a cookie mix so you can make one cookie in it. I gave my son, Justin, the rest of my cast iron pan, so this was the only one I had available. And my five by seven is a little bit long, but it still works. If you have a pot that tends to get a hot handle to it, or if you have a frying pan with just a metal handle, these work really great so that you can go ahead and protect your hand from the heat of that. I know a lot of the times this handle, even though it's got that plastic on it, if I'm boiling water, it does get hot. You can measure the length of your handle and just add about an inch extra to the length for our seam allowances and turning and all of that. If you're making them for gifts and you don't have any of these types of frying pans at home, you can always go to Walmart and just bring a tape measure or a ruler and go into their cooking section and measure one of their cast iron frying pan handles to see how long they are. And then you can use that measurement for your friends. What I've seen online, the majority of people are using the five by seven as a universal measurement. You may think it might be a little bit strange that we only have one piece of lining and one piece of outer fabric, but if you notice, this is much narrower than the full piece, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew the seam after we fold it. So that's why we only need one piece. When we're working on a narrow tube like this, it's much easier just to fold it than to have separate pieces. So I'm gonna lay my Insulbrite batting down first. Now the Insulbrite company, they tell us it doesn't matter if we put the metallic side up or if we put the cotton side. Now we know this is Insulbrite versus regular batting because not only do we see that shimmery metal part, but we can also hear the crinkleness. If you feel that it works better one way or the other, whether you have the metal side out or the metal side in, go ahead and sew it whichever way works for you. I'm just gonna lay mine down and however it is, that's how it's gonna work. My next piece I'm gonna put down is going to be my outer fabric with the right side up. Now my lining fabric is the same on both sides. It doesn't actually have a right side or a wrong side. If it did, I would put right sides down so if I had a fun design on it, I would want to make sure that these two fabrics had right sides together. At one of these short ends, make sure all three layers are lined up right along the top edge. You could put clips in it or you could pin it. For me, the Insulbrite tends to move around a lot. So even if I'm transporting it from here to my sewing machine or sewing it, I want to make sure it's nice and secure so it doesn't jiggle around everywhere. Now you can sew it from batting side up or batting side down, whichever works for you. I prefer to do it this way. I'm gonna stitch a 3 8 inch seam allowance and I'm gonna use a 2.5 stitch length. Because the insole bright's a little thick or if you're using two pieces of cotton batting or maybe you're using an old washcloth or an old thin towel in place of the batting, 
you want a little bit longer stitch length to be able to go through all of those layers. Now I'm using a 3 8 inch seam allowance because it's easier for me to make a little bit of a larger seam allowance and then trim it down because of the Insulbrite and sewing through all of these layers. Just sewing a quarter inch seam allowance is a little bit more difficult to get a nice straight line. I went ahead and backstitched at the beginning and the end just to secure those stitches so I don't have to worry about anything moving around. I want to trim off a little bit of this excess batting out of this seam. Just fold my two fabrics back. Then leaving about an eighth of an inch of the insole bright, I'll just trim that excess out. It may not look like a lot, but when we're trying to top stitch on there, it's gonna make a difference. I'm gonna take this over to my iron and I'm going to flip it over this way. And what I wanna do is I wanna take this seam allowance here and I want to press it towards the insole bright, towards this thicker layer. And now that may not make very much sense, but I wanna add this nice little bit of top stitching on here, and I don't wanna to try to top stitch on this little tiny tube on my sewing machine. That's very difficult, and there's really no sense going through all of that struggle when we can go ahead and do it right now. So now you can see why we wanted to get rid of that extra batting out of there. So we'll take it to the iron, and we'll press this over. You can start on this side if you want, and just give a nice, good, steamy press that way and then bring that up. There you see, it's all pressed down. I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and I wanna stitch in between the end of our seam allowance here and our stitching line and I'll just stitch in between the two and do a little stitch all the way to the end. You can back stitch here and there. And when we're done, it'll give us that little top stitching. There we go, and we turn it over. You see that line of top stitching right along there. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. It'll just end up being a regular spot where you won't see any of the stitching. As you're using it, it's just going to keep the lining down there and out of the way anyway. It's just one of those little extra touches to make it look nice. Plus, it'll make people wonder, how did you get the stitching on there? As you can see, my insole bright snuck out a little bit on the end. I'm just going to trim that up just so I don't have to worry about it. Get it out of the way. Keeping the insole bright over here with our outer fabric and our lining is all by itself, we're going to fold this in half lengthwise. I want to line this section up right here so these two parts, when I fold this in half, I want to make sure that this lines up nice and neat. Put a clip or pin in it. As you can see, my insole bright is kind of shifted around a little bit and that's going to be fine. I'll just line up my outer fabric. When I sew a 3 8 inch seam allowance, this is going to get caught so everything will be held in place anyway. When I get to my lining, I want to leave an opening about two, two and a half inches wide. And that's where I'm going to turn the whole project out when I'm done to turn it right side out. We need that little spot right here in the lining just to turn everything right side out. It's much easier to put it on the side than it would be to put it on the bottom. So you can mark that spot with pins. You can put two pins in to mark it. So you can use something like a friction pen that erases with heat, maybe a little mechanical pencil just to make a couple dashes. You could put a couple pins in there just to mark the area. I'm gonna start up at this end. I'm gonna backstitch and still keep it with the 2.5, 3.0 stitch length. My 3 8 inch seam allowance, I'll backstitch, come down here and pivot, and I will follow this all the way down. I like to stitch a couple times there just to hold that big bulk in the area. When I get down to my turning point, I'll backstitch here, cut my thread, start back up, backstitch, and then backstitch here off the end. Let me show you what that looks like. There you can see the opening. I'm gonna trim down my seam allowance now so I don't have too much in the bulky seam area and stuff. I'm gonna start by trimming down my corners to make them turn easier. Just make sure you don't cut through the stitching right at the corner. I like to go a little bit away from it. You can trim this corner also. Again, 
Make sure you don't cut through the stitching line. If you do, just go ahead and re-sew a new stitching line. I can trim the batting out of the seam if I want to do that. Trim that seam allowance of the fabric itself down. Or I can just go ahead and trim the whole thing. Now remember how mine shifted a little bit, my insole bright, you can see where it got stitched down. Anyways, I just followed along the edge here using this on the side of my presser foot and I was able to catch all the insole bright. Now I'm not using my best sewing scissors because this does have a whole bunch of metal flakes or something in it and I don't want that metal to dull my scissors. Slow through the thickness. Now when I get to this section, I don't want to trim the extra seam allowance from the hole. I want that to make it easier when I go to stitch it closed. I want that extra bit there, but I can trim off the corners. And that extra bit down there on the bottom. Now with a project this small, I like to take it over to my iron and I will take this part here and fold it back on both sides and give this a nice good steamy press. After I turn this around, the right sides out, it's going to make it so much easier for me to line this up and press it. So now we're going to turn it right side out. You can put your fingers down and usually you can just get it to turn right side out. Or if you have a pair of hemostats, whether you have these fancy colorful ones or just the plain silver version. Put your hemostats in there, grab the end, just to help guide it out a little bit. I have a point turner and I also have a large crochet hook. They both have a nice rounded edge. The point turner is a little bit pointed, but it's not sharp. And I'll use something along those lines. You can also use an unsharpened pencil, use the eraser end of it to just help work out those corners. And you have the same thing here. You see how nice our little turning hole is now since we already pre-pressed those little seam allowances there. Take this back over to my sewing machine and I want to stitch this opening closed. You can hand stitch it closed with a whip stitch or a ladder stitch, but I want to stitch this by machine. But when I do it, I wanna make sure that I'm going to be somewhere in between the fold and the end of the seam allowance. I like to stay as close to the fold as I can. So you can put a couple pins in it if you like, or just take it over. I start stitching it a little bit before the opening and I stop stitching a little bit afterwards back stitch at both places. I'm just going to use the black thread. It's going to tuck into this little handle. Nobody's going to see it, but you can go ahead and use a matching thread. So maybe a medium gray for this one. You can see how close I am to the outside edge. And that just ensures that nothing is going to pop out from the inside. There's no frayed fabric that's going to come out. None of the seam allowance is going to pop out. So it's all held in there nicely. So then we just have to push it to the inside. Let's get your lining to go all the way down to the bottom. I found it helpful just to take the handle of the pot and to gently slide it in and let that handle bring the lining all the way down to the bottom for you. Then you can take it over to your ironing station and give it a nice good press. So there we are, our frying pan handle cover is all finished. We already know that it fit once when we used it to put the lining down. The frying pan handle covers are a really great gift idea. They would make a wonderful Christmas gift or for any occasion throughout the year. But I was thinking for Christmas, it might be fun to make a bunch of these and give it to all of your family members. I know some people would like to take one gift idea and make multiples and then everyone in their family gets the same gift. What I was thinking is it would be fun to make a package gift, to make like a basket. You can make a kitchen basket. You can make some regulation pot holders and hot pads. You can make oven mitts. You can have the frying pan handle 
little holder mitt, whatever you want to call it. You can make some dish towels that have a special decoration on the bottom, whether it's holiday themed or themed for that family member. Just because you make the same thing for five different family members doesn't mean they can't be personalized for each member. Maybe you have someone that likes Western items. Maybe you like someone who has lemons or is more of an outdoor theme, more flowers or something. You can use fabrics that would work for their kitchen and match what they already have. Maybe you have some younger people in your family that are just starting out in college or in their first home. You can buy them a special frying pan, a cast iron skillet, make them a little handle to go with it. Maybe purchase something like this from Walmart where it comes with it and make a handle to go in addition to it and then the extra pot holders or hot pads or whatever. It's fun to have a themed gift like that. So if you start sewing now, you'll have less to make at the last minute when the holiday season comes around. So your scrappy word for today is popcorn. Do you eat yours plain or do you put butter on it? I like a little bit of butter, but I like that kettle corn seasoning that you can sprinkle on your popcorn. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. If you're looking for something else to watch, you can check out this video here or there. If you haven't subscribed, click on the little flamingo there and you can subscribe to my channel. And after you subscribe, ring the notification bell so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos. See you guys later. Bye!